with the PLM program provide for us three basic things. One is they provide uh, professional wildlife biologists to help us establish and set up our program. Number two, they provide for an extended season. So our season is a three month season rather than a three or four week season. So we can spread our hunting and harvesting over a longer period of time and to put less stress on the wildlife and provide more opportunity for quality hunts. And then the third thing they do is they give us opportunity to harvest those so that uh, we can manage the buck doe ratios and um, to get a, a balance of the different um, uh, male, female species out there. I guess the biggest thing that you have to be willing to do is to be open to change, but at the same time protect your heritage and protect your quality of life that you want, but be willing to have other people that are professionals come in and help you uh, enhance your property and make it a better place for animals to live and to be able to uh, capitalize that on financially. When it gets right down to it, the biology of animals to promote them in an environment basically boils down to three simple things. One is there needs to be ample supply of good, clean water that is accessible to them without long travel. Two, there's got to be an excellent feed source that gives them feed 12 months out of the year, not just for six months, but 12 months out of the year. And the third thing, there has to be escape cover, uh, cover for them to relax in, to rest in, uh, to, so that they're not harassed. And so really there's three things that for any animal, no matter what the species, it's water, food, and cover. This program has helped us become a functional family, I guess. Because in 1985, when we got first got exposed to the private lands management program, and to holistic management, uh, we were pretty much a dysfunctional family. And the reason was big because we were under very severe financial stress. And so as we started to get our ranch into the black using the PLM program, the stress started to relieve and then we were able to communicate better and we probably have the best communication uh, now than we've ever had and we're more profitable now than we've ever been. The PLM program to me is a savior of wildlife in California or some program like it because we need to stimulate and develop wildlife and manage wildlife from a sustainable base, not just a short run base. And the PLM uh, helps you develop a program that's sustainable for the long run rather than just uh, you know go in and mine the wildlife for three years and kill everything and then not have a resource base there for your your future for your kids and grandkids and great grandkids. This island is 54,000 acres or approximately 85 square miles and the elk and the deer were actually put on by the landowner 90 some years ago now and then they found out that the wildlife the deer and elk were doing so well that maybe there were some financial possibilities of working with them. We haven't been in a situation where we've done any habitat management, but it's been primarily wildlife management as far as numbers go. When we got here, there were way too many deer for the, for the habitat, and the same thing with the elk. And we've actually dropped numbers down, and what we put together is a quality uh, game management program uh, primarily on numbers, of having the right numbers, not just you know the number of, of animals in the standpoint of the number of males, the number of females, uh, and, and fawns uh, or calves. Through managing those numbers, we've been able to bring the quality way up. Uh, right now, we probably have the best Roosevelt elk hunting in North America right here on this ranch, as well as the mule deer. It's one of the best mule deer hunting properties probably in the West as well. One thing in wildlife, and it's hard for people to understand sometimes, and, and even the ranchers, is that that always more isn't better. It's that sometimes we have to actually eliminate more animals than you'd think you'd have to to really make it work well. And that's sort of what's happened, happened here, is to really get our quality program up. We've, we've really cut back actually on the number of animals. And it really shows up when we start doing what we call composition counts. Most of the state of California, they feel good if they have 30 or 40 percent fawn crop. 
Well, over here, we're up to like 100% because we've got the population in a very healthy condition. I think the animals you've seen here, you'll see the just, you know, beautiful coats on them and they're very healthy. And they have a tendency in the, in the deer to have twins and, uh, and all the cows to have their calves. If we really just look at the private lands and the idea that what landowners themselves can do without any type of regulation or or you know formal kind of program but they can still go out and do a lot of things for their wildlife on their property and that's really what most of the programs are and then you have some more formal ones that the states have started to where they're under regular regular regulations to where they have to do specific things and can do it through the fish and game departments and the fish and game departments themselves get involved the benefits are, are one of doing better land management, having more wildlife, having a better quality of wildlife when it comes to deer or elk or moose or caribou, whatever. And, that, and, and the, the wildlife that's resident to the, to the property is really the easiest to work with. Tyonic is a good example as they've just got through with the timber harvest there and now the moose population is starting to grow a little bit. We need to look really close at that because now would be the time to decide what kind of habitat needs to be managed or how the habitat would be managed to even have more moose. We're about 20 minutes south of the village of Tyonic, which is on the west side of the Cooks Inlet, approximately 60 miles almost due west of Anchorage. We run a um, pretty much a fishing lodge on the Chewett River, which is also owned by the uh, Tyonic Native Corporation. We focus on groups that want to come in here three or four days and fish. We keep the groups small, generally eight maximum. Silver fishing in Alaska is probably the most popular and as far as a salmon run, there's more good silver salmon runs in Alaska than any other run of salmon that people are interested in really fishing for. But I can see our occupancy going up to between 80 and 90 percent for the silver season and 100 percent for the king season in the next two years. Tyonic has an incredible fishery here that needs to be run under private management because if not, it's very delicate and it'll be exploited in a very short order. The lodge was built out of local, uh, local lumber, spruce, that was cut and milled here in a, a mill just down the road, about a mile. The cabins are um, they're quite comfortable. There's nothing fancy. It's just a really simple log cabin construction. Some of the improvements we've made have been more, more towards creature comforts, providing uh, a little more comfortable uh, bedding, uh, making the rooms more comfortable by painting bare walls, adding carpet, curtains. We just completed putting bathrooms in two of the cabins. It's a very competitive market, especially in Alaska, and I don't expect to look back after this season. I think it's just going to be um, Tyonic Lodge and what we have to offer as far as facilities and the, our programs. Um, we're going to be very much in demand. My first fish. <laughs> Don't lose it. Private lands wildlife management in Alaska for the Alaska natives in the bush allows them to have jobs in the communities, generate income from outside sources, and bring it into the community and allows them to keep that money here while working on their land and using the resources that are on it. My hope and desire is that we have several successful models going. I keep in mind that this is not a quick fix. It takes three to five years to get a model going. And that we have uh, five years under our belt in which other villages have seen, seen the success of this and say, we want this for us. Ideally, we will have children coming back from college and saying, I want to be here. I want to raise my children here. <laughs>